welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving, goal oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. Welcome to episode 163, saying no, why we don't, and how you can. Hello, hello, hello. It's a good day around here. It's Peter, my husband's birthday. He's 45. I've been making all of the rhyming jokes about turning 45 and being alive. 45, you have arrived. I've been having such a good time with it. It's so fun. So um, if you all follow me on the socials, I had a little project made for him. He has these quotes and like dad-isms, we call them here in the house, (laughs) where he says these phrases on repeat all the time. Like every morning he says, get in the car when he takes the boys to school, which I know sounds pretty basic, but the way he says it, it's all right, get in the car. And then he says, all right. And like he puts these pronunciations on these words that are just hilarious. And so we gathered, the kids and I gathered all of these phrases together and I had my assistant um, make them into little graphics that we printed and framed. And so he unwrapped them all this morning and just died, just died laughing. It was so fun to watch him unwrap them and see them. And I can't wait to see what we do with them and hang them in the house. It was so, so fun. So happy birthday, Peter. So today, what I want to talk about is saying no. And I've heard from a lot of my clients all the time. It's a very hot topic of like, how do you say no? How do you tell your best friend that you don't want to have a glass of wine? How do you show up to this work event and not drink when you have always drank at these work events? Or how do you go out to dinner with all of your friends and say no? Or how can you go to a concert and say no? And I'm not just talking about abstaining. I'm talking about maybe even just saying no to that third glass of wine or that second glass of wine or that fourth glass of wine. Like in all aspects of like, how do we just say no to it being no more or no period. So it's just, it's, you know, a lot of people think that it's easy. Just say no, just say no. Right. Like when we were kids, it was like this marketing campaign, right? Like this public service thing, like just say no to drugs. And for people that don't over drink, that seems easy. Just say no. Right. But it's not easy for people to say that because we've been practicing these types of behaviors for so long. But before we learn how you can say no easily, we got to look at why it's hard for us to say no. So the remember, like the core of everything that I teach you all is understanding where you are, why you are doing what you are doing. So seeing that and understanding that, then it's easier for us to make changes. If we don't understand ourselves and why we do the things we do, it's really hard to make those changes because we don't know where we're starting from. So I've identified the top three reasons it's hard for us to say no. I'm going to dive into each one of those. The first one and the number one reason of all things is we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Okay, this is the number one reason why we don't say no. We think that our no will cause somebody else's pain. And we want to avoid that at all costs. But what we don't see in this decision is that we cause our own pain when we do this. We say no to ourselves and what we want, and we throw our dreams under the rug because we don't want to offend somebody else, right? And this all comes under the assumption that we will offend that person if we say no. So we think saying no equals this automatic offense on the other person. And that is sometimes just not the case, right? So sometimes we say no, and the other person could care less. Sometimes we say no, the other person is like, cool, I won't drink either. Sometimes we say no, and the other person is like, yay, more for me, (laughs) right? Sometimes we say no, and the other person might say, well, I got your favorite. Or what? We always drink together. I wish you would have told me. Or most often, if they're an old drinking buddy and drink as much or more than you did, they might think, Well, what are you going to think about my drinking if you're going to cut back? This is what they're thinking on the inside, right? They're not necessarily saying that to you, but 
if they're your old drinking buddy and they're drinking just as much as you, they're going to start looking at their own drinking. So they might think, what are you going to think about my drinking if you're cutting back? Does that mean I can't drink? I won't have as much fun with you. Are you judging my drinking then? Do you think my drinking is too much? Well, I don't want to stop drinking. They're thinking about themselves and how this is going to change things for them. And I know this is what happens because I've paid attention to what I think (laughs) when people tell me things. Like when my skinny friend tells me she needs to lose weight and she's gained all this weight and she's like 5'7 in a size 2. Okay? When she tells me this, I'm like, what the fuck do you think about me and my body if you think you need to lose weight? Right? I know you all can relate to this. We all make it about us. And we wonder how these changes will affect our lives, not the other person. And I also remember before I changed my relationship with alcohol and someone told me that they didn't drink or they were taking a break or they didn't want to drink tonight. I thought, does that mean I can't? Are you, are you going to wish I wasn't? I can't imagine doing that. That sounds so boring, (laughs) right? That's what I was thinking. I internalized it to my own life, not theirs. So for this one, remember that they are most likely thinking about themselves, not you. And please remember the other person's feelings of getting hurt can't be caused by you and you're saying no to drinking. That doesn't even make sense if you think about it, right? You saying no to not drinking alcohol, you saying no to not putting alcohol in your mouth, in your mouth, in your body, you saying no to that cannot cause somebody to have a feeling in their body. It doesn't make sense. There's no connection there. Okay. They are responsible for how they feel and we can't control that because literally everyone is going to have a different thought about you saying no. Let them decide what they're going to think about it. You decide what you want to think. Let it go. Find the peace. If you get comfortable feeling your feelings and being with negative emotions, you will find it easier to let other people have their own feelings. You can't control how they feel. You just can't. So don't sacrifice yourself to spare someone an uncomfortable feeling. It's not worth it. All right, number two, the second reason. We don't want to be judged or labeled. We think if we say no, the other person might ask us questions about why we don't want to drink. And we don't want to tell them that we are cutting back on our drinking because we don't want them to judge our drinking in the future, right? Or label us or worry about us. We don't want to be monitored about how much we're drinking. We don't want to admit that we are working on cutting back because if they see us drinking in the future, we don't want that stink eye. We don't want questions, judgments to come in like, oh, I thought you were trying to cut back. All of those types of comments, right? So we don't say no. We keep it to ourselves and get go against our own goals and desires to cut back because we don't want judgment. All right, that's reason number two. Number three is FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. We associate drinking with connection, bonding, fun, good memories, letting loose. And if we say no to drinks, we might miss all of that, right? So when we're faced with a decision or an offer to drink, our brain likes to suggest that we will miss out on all the good stuff. And just remember, we are motivated to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And missing out sounds awful and painful. So we avoid that at all costs and say yes in the moment to avoid the pain of missing out. But what we don't realize is that we're sacrificing in the moment pleasure for future pain. I'm going to say that again. Fear of missing out equates to sacrificing in the moment pleasure for future pain. Okay. And we don't care because the pain right now is real. The pain in the future doesn't exist yet. And it's way more motivating for us to avoid the pain that we are facing right now instead of worrying about the pain we'll feel tomorrow after we don't honor our commitments and face disappointment and frustration and shame, right? So these are the the main reasons we don't say no, even when we really want to. So now that you're aware of these reasons, I want to give you some suggestions to how you can say no easier. And again, this might be a no more, thinks I've had enough, or it might be a no altogether. So first you want to ask yourself why it might feel hard to say no in whatever situation you want to. So see if you can find your reason in one of the areas I mentioned above. Okay, so is it the FOMO? Is it be the fear of being judged? Or is it the fear or the worry that you're going to hurt somebody else's feelings? Okay, So again, knowing where the discomfort is coming from will be hugely helpful for you to overcome 
and say yes to what you really want and no to less of what you want. So if it's fear of missing out, the third reason, remind yourself that you will actually miss out on your goals and dreams instead of conversations and connectedness or letting loose. Remind yourself that you will actually remember remember all of the conversations, have more meaningful, authentic conversations, and all the good stuff happens when you follow through with your promises to yourself. Remember, it takes a willingness to be uncomfortable and learn how to have connections that don't require alcohol. Then practice saying no out loud. Like even before you go to the thing or before you're faced with saying no in real life, say no thanks out loud to yourself. I've had enough. No, thanks. No, I'm not drinking tonight. No, thanks. I'm good. No, you go ahead, please. I'll just have some tea or whatever, some water. Visualize yourself doing this ahead of time and practice out loud. Okay. For every situation where you want to practice saying no, playing it out ahead of time and visualizing how you would do that with success is going to be super helpful for you. For the second reason, the worry of the label that you might receive or the judgment that you might get. If you ask yourself why it feels hard, and this is your answer, remember that people are going to judge you no matter what you do. Drink or not drink, have one or four, they're going to have their thoughts. (laughs) And you cannot change that, my friends. Remind yourself not to alter who you want to be because the possibility that they may have judgmental thoughts about you. Their thoughts are their business, not yours. And you cannot change that no matter what you do. Your actions don't automatically create thoughts in their head, right? They will have a big range of thoughts and none of those thoughts will help you get towards your goals with alcohol. Only your thoughts have that power. So stop projecting what they might think. Turn the focus on you and you decide what you want to think about saying no or no more. These are some suggestions for you to think, okay? I'm learning how to not judge me. I'm focused on what I want to do and my reasons are valid and I don't have to explain them to anyone but myself. It's okay to say no, not today. And let that be good enough for now. And if you see that you're landing in that first area where you're worried about hurting someone's feelings, the first thing I talked about, remember? Just remember that you saying no doesn't have that power. Your no cannot hurt somebody's feelings. We were told as children that saying no to somebody when they offer you food and drink is rude (laughs) and we need to be polite so we don't hurt their feelings is complete and total bullshit as an adult. Okay. We need to practice saying no to things we do not want. You don't want it. End of story. If they get upset about that, then they need to hire a life coach who can teach them how to not or how to let go of being a people pleaser, okay? Your job is to not make them happy by consuming alcohol, all right? Their happiness is their job. Their feelings are actually okay. It's not a problem that they might feel uncomfortable, just like it's not a problem if you do. To go from saying yes to everything all the time and then all of a sudden easily saying no to people is not going to feel like a walk in the park. It's going to feel awkward. It's going to feel hard. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's okay. If you really resonate with that people pleaser, start small. Start by saying no to smaller things like doing the dishes every night or always getting the kids up and ready or saying no to working past 6 p.m. What are some other little no's you can start practicing that will help you feel more comfortable saying no when someone offers you alcohol that you don't want? In all, please remember, it's okay to say no. You are not obligated to anyone for anything, even as mothers, wives, employees, daughters, sisters. Learn to be obligated to you and what you desire, and I promise you can't go wrong. It's not selfish. It's respect. It's self-love. It will show other people how they can start saying no too. And my absolute favorite quote as of late (laughs) Is, comes from my client, and I'm just going to call her M for privacy. She's inside my Stop Over Drinking and Start Living program. She wrote in response to somebody asking similar questions like, how do I navigate the people and saying no to them? She said, I'm an adult, and this is my drink. <laughs> I'm an adult, and this is my drink. She shared that. That's what her response was when her friend was kind of pushing her to have a drink. She pulled out her sparkling water and said, I'm an adult, and this is my drink. 
End of story. Boom. Book closed. I seriously wish I could make t-shirts or buttons out of this and send them to every single one of you. I am an adult and this is what I choose. Boom. Okay. <laughs> I hope you have a beautiful week. And if you want help navigating, saying more yeses to you and more noes to other people, get your booty inside, stop over drinking and start living. We're still taking applications. Click the link in the bio or in the show notes and get those applications in. I can't wait to see you all there. Bye. <laughs>